Hi and welcome. We're just going to wait for some people or more people to join before we begin. Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar today. We're just waiting for people to get into the Zoom and then we'll get started. I'll begin with just bringing, uh, talking over the ground rules. Uh, so all microphones will be kept muted throughout the webinar. If you've got a question, please type it into the Zoom Q&A box. Uh, the Q&A box will be what's monitored for questions, not the chat box, so please make sure it's a Q&A. You can upvote questions that you're, you like and you're interested in, and the ones that are upvoted will be answered first. We'll aim to answer as many questions as possible. If there's any we don't have time to answer, we'll get back with those. And please complete the feedback survey, which will launch at the end of the webinar. And this webinar is recorded, and the recording will be shared with all registered participants and on the Europe PNC YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us today. So we'll get ready to start in just a few moments. I think we've got quite a few people that have come in now, so uh, participants entering has started to slow down, so we'll start. Um, so this webinar is checking for preprint and article updates with Europe PMC. I'd like to welcome Maria Livchenko. Uh, she is the Outreach and Engagement Officer and will introduce Europe PMC to you. We, to you. we also have Li Jun Xing, which is the Senior Developer at Europe PMC and is here to answer programmatic questions for you. So I'll pass over to Maria for her presentation. Um, hi everyone and, and thank you for joining today and um, thank you Summer for introducing me. So Summer is uh, going to be hosting the webinar today um, and uh, <clears throat> helping out with um, putting links to chats and um, all those sorts of things. Um, I've uh, added um, some um, useful um, details to my slides. They're usually at the bottom like this um, link to contact us if um, you need to. Um, and we'll also be sharing some of these um, in the chat um, as we go so you can um, try out certain things. Um, we are meant to be having a live demo today so part of my presentation will be actually going to the website and um, showing you how the tool works. Now as we all know um, whenever there's a live demo schedule there's some maintenance coinciding with it so I really hope um, you all get to um, actually see live action uh, but just in case I've also prepared some um, backup um, slides um, so um, either way, hopefully I'll be able to explain exactly um, what the tool does and how you can benefit from it. Um, I also know that today on call there are people um, from um, very different backgrounds with very different use cases. Um, and um, while I'll be trying to um, explain um, for a broad um, sort of area of knowledge um, and, and give as much background as I can if there are points where um, you're not um, entirely sure how that's kind of applicable to your role, please um, don't hesitate to either ask questions um, or um, get in touch with us and uh, we'll be happy to go over this um, in more detail with you. So with that preface, um, let me first introduce um, the topic for today. Um, as you know, we're going to be talking about updates for preprints and articles. So I want to um, explain what we um, mean when um, we say um, updates. Um, so for those of you who don't know, preprints are essentially complete scientific manuscripts that um, have not undergone um, journal organized peer review. Preprints are typically publicly posted um, to preprint servers um, and uh, they may or may not later be published as a journal article. 
part of the appeal of preprints is that they can be changed with addition of new versions. Um, and so authors might um, change, uh, might add new data, change their conclusions, and even edit minor typos or, or um, uh, figures or, or authorship and all sorts of things. And so um, there can be multiple versions appearing for the same preprint. I think the one with the largest number we have in European C is a preprint with 14 versions. So they're kind of a living document that continues to change um, as you go. Um, now, in some cases, authors also intend to publish the preprint, so they submit it to a journal um, where it undergoes um, editorial input and also um, the traditional uh, peer review process. Um, and so um, you can view this published article as a sort of a version, later version of a preprint. Um, but in any case, those are two different types of outputs, uh, but they might be linked the preprint and the corresponding journal article. Now, this is sort of a, 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 a new area, um, I think, for life science preprints, um, where um, some of the preprint records need to be um, withdrawn or removed, um, sort of a corresponding analog of retracting an article um, due to a variety of reasons. I mean, in some cases, um, it is due to, uh, for example, journal policies that don't allow posting preprints prior to the publication and authors choose to remove the preprint to publish it later. Um, it might be because conclusions have changed um, uh, dramatically and a new version just isn't going to um, help sort it out. There might also be things like authorship disputes or even plagiarism and so on. And so there are two different ways in which different preprint servers deal with those um, um, issues. In the first case, this is quite similar to an article retraction. Um, the preprint version that is being withdrawn remains available on the preprint server. And the new version, um, which will be called withdrawal notice, is posted on the server. And I'll show you examples of that later. But essentially, you can still read the original preprint. You're just now notified that that has been withdrawn by the authors. Where preprints are different is that um, there exists a path where preprint versions are removed and the only thing that remains of the preprint record is the notice, the removal notice in this case. Um, and so um, that is something that's unique to preprints, but um, it is um, a, just a different way to handle um, this kind of change to, to the record. And finally, as I um, was talking about it earlier, um, journal articles might also be retracted for a number of reasons. Um, and in those cases, the journal article is still available, uh, but it will be linked to the retraction notice explaining the reasons for retraction. So um, all of these changes are actually quite important to a number of workflows. Um, for example, um, if um, you're doing a systematic review, you would want to know that the um, version you're citing is the most up-to-date version. Um, and so you'd want to know if a preprint has a journal published version or not. Um, similarly, if you're a data curator and you work for a database that can only release the data publicly after a journal article has been published, you might want to know when a preprint becomes published so you can release the data from the embargo. Um, as a researcher citing somebody else's work, you might want to know if a preprint or a journal article are retracted or withdrawn to um, alert your readers accordingly, um, and so on and so forth. Um, so it is really useful to know when these things happen, but it isn't really easy to know when these things happen, particularly because, especially in the preprint world, there are um, many different preprint servers that have different policies um, for handling versions and um, withdrawals and removals. Um, and so there wasn't until recently a tool that would allow you to get all of these updates in a single place. And so this is why we at EuroPMC um, decided to develop something to address this problem. So I'll now um, just briefly um, explain um, what we have come up with. Um, essentially, we have developed um, an article status monitor tool, um, which um, enables users to um, add a list of publication IDs. This might be one um, 10, 100 or 1000 of publication IDs um, and you get return and what it returns um, you is um, a list of status updates 
for all those different events. Either a preprint has a more recent version, or a preprint has been published in a journal, or a preprint has been withdrawn, removed, or a journal article has been retracted. Um, the um, reason why Europe PMC was able to do this, and here I just want to explain um, kind of why, um, why we took this on board and, and how we progressed with this. So Europe PMC is an open and free database of life sciences literature. Um, we um, index um, 40 million records, including journal articles, uh, preprints, but also other documents, guidelines, books, protocols, and so on. Um, and um, we focus on three main areas in our work, which is supporting publishing innovation. So um, things like linking preprints with um, withdrawn or published versions um, or with peer review, preprint peer reviews um, uh, with um, um, identifiers for authors funding and organizations. We also um, work um, on making science more reproducible by linking publications with underlying data. And finally, um, we um, develop um, what we call the next generation discovery tools using text mining and machine learning um, to invent more um, advanced and faceted ways to search the scientific literature. So publishing innovation is a focus for us. And um, we also had the expertise to do this. Um, we um, are very um, fortunate to be a part of the PubMed Central International Archive Network, which means we um, uh, exchange uh, full text um, of articles with um, PubMed Central in the USA, and I'll explain later how that is relevant. Um, we're also hosted by um, EMBL EBI, the European Bioinformatics Institute, and so we're surrounded by a host of other databases, um, a lot of which um, maybe some of you even on this call have provided us with input when designing this tool. Um, and we're also um, supported by a group of international life science funders um, who make this work possible. So um, the reason why we were able to um, jump on this is because um, what Europe PMC already offered was having preprints and journal articles in a single search interface. So we could develop something that would fit both of those streams. Um, we have diverse data sources, um, including 24 different life science preprints platforms, as well as journal articles from PubMed and other sources. Um, as I mentioned, we have full text available to search alongside um, abstracts, um, and I'll talk um, how that is relevant to identifying preprint withdrawals. Um, and we also provide a lot of advanced search options, which is what's been used behind the scenes for, um, for the tool returning these updates. And finally, we offer both website and programmatic access, and this is exactly what the tool can offer. So um, the status monitor itself um, is a website tool where users can input IDs into a box, and this is what I'm going to be demoing in just a moment. Um, but then we also have a programmatic module um, of the um, REST API um, called Status Update Search Module. Um, this is the interactive um, Swagger documentation for it. So um, if anyone is interested to try it out, um, the link um, is um, down here. Um, <clears throat> so um, I am now going to attempt um, to show how this actually works. And I'll start with the website. Um, so um, you can access the article status monitor um, from the tools section um, of your PMC um, website. Um, and this is the page. So it allows you to enter um, a string of IDs, which might be DOIs, particularly for preprints or journal articles, but also PubMed IDs, um, PMC IDs, um, or PPR IDs. These are IDs for preprints that Europe PMC assigns to all of the preprint records. Um, and so you can um, try and enter a list of them. So I have a predefined list of examples. Um, it is in the slides. Um, and um, if you'd like to um, check some of these examples, the slides will be shared later with the recording as well. Um, but Summer can drop a link in the chat um, if you'd like to try it um, right afterwards. So I'm just going to copy paste those IDs and type them here in 
the um, and the tool. So as you can see, we have some preprint IDs, a DOI. Um, this is a PubMed ID and then a PMC ID. And so you can hit submit. And as you can see, for the five of the six IDs, we have um, an update associated. So um, this is the dashboard that comes up. Um, it will give you information on the updates available for preprints and updates available for the articles. And it will sort them by published preprints, preprint versions, um, withdrawn or removed preprints, as well as article retractions. Um, now you can um, export these status updates. So that will um, basically create a text file. Um, so let me just show you what it looks like. I'm not gonna attempt to download it. Um, right now, but um, basically um, this is what it looks like. It will give um, the original ID. So it's a PPR, a DOI um, or a MED, um, the um, original ID. Um, so here it's the preprint ID or the actual DOI that you use to search um, or the PMED. Um, and then what type of the status update are we talking about? So maybe it's a new version is available for a preprint or maybe the article is retracted. And then finally, the associated ID is um, the linked um, new um, uh, record. So in the case of a new version available for a preprint, this will be the latest version. In the case of a published version available for a preprint, this will be a corresponding PMED. And in a case of a retracted article, this will be the retraction notice. So it will not only um, give you um, what stats um, update this ID is associated with, but also the corresponding record that you, that you need. Um, these, um, getting, getting back to the monitor, um, you can also um, go to the website view of all of those records. So, for example, if you're not dealing with, say, um, a bulk um, list of uh, IDs and you just wanted to, say, view the withdrawal notice um, uh, or see the retraction notice or, or read the new preprint version, then um, you could do that. So um, we can, for example, go and view the published preprints. It is useful in another way, and I'll also explain that in a moment. So let's um, hope the search works. So here is um, um, here are the two um, published articles. Um, so if you remember, we clicked on published preprints. So those will be the articles that are linked to the preprint. So we can um, open, for example, this one. And you will see that um, once the article is opened, um, it says that it is linked. It is based on a previously available preprint. And you can view the preprint from that link as well. So there is a, a link established between the two. Um, what is uh, more important is that you can also export um, this list of citations um, and you can select the format in which you want it. So not only do you get the updates listed, you can also then get some information about these updates if you needed that. So um, there is a, a number of formats to select from. Now, similarly, what you can do is do this the other way around. So let's say you have a search um, in your PMC. Um, so I have an example search um, right here. So um, I'm looking for articles that um, contain phrases like strategy to analyze domains or G3 specific non-invasive diagnostic marker candidate. And I get a list of results. Now, obviously I've pre-selected the search. Um, it just gives us um, preprints um, that have become published articles. So this is a list of um, the four results, two preprints and two published articles. What we can now do is we can export citations and we can select the ID list as an option. And as we download that file, uh, basically what will happen um, let, so um, this is taking just a moment. Um, all right, so not to worry. Um, 
today is a slightly slow day, but uh, here is what the experts, um, sorry, I'll just move the zoom uh, controls out of the way. Here's what the expert file looks like. So we had four results and these are the four IDs um, that we retrieved. Now for the last record, there are two IDs, PMID and PMC ID, because uh, we both we have full text as well as the abstract record for this one. But what you can do is now you can copy this and um, straight away paste it into the article status monitor. So this is just a previous page, but you can enter IDs again. So if we go, um, I remove the previous list uh, and I now paste directly what we've got from the expert function, you'll notice that they're formatted differently. Um, it will still work and it will tell us that there are two preprints that have been published in that result list of IDs and we can do this again. So basically this is how it works for um, the website tool. Um, and also, um, I've mentioned that we have the programmatic um, uh, search for programmatic module as well. Um, so this is a um, page for the um, articles RESTful API, which you can find under the developers tab on your PMC website. Um, and um, as a non-developer, I will not attempt to um, go through it in quite as much detail, but it should work uh, pretty much the same way. So it's a... Um, post method for status update search uh, and you it tells you how to construct your per post search request you will need to use the following url um, and then um, request body um, in this format for each src which is the source so you can find the source codes in the api documentation so this is say ppr for preprints or med for PubMed records um, and so on and so forth. And then um, external ID is the actual ID of the record. So you can um, actually see some example values here. So this concludes the live demo part and I'm very pleased that we were able to get through it, but uh, I'm gonna just um, get back to the slides because as much as we wish that this tool um, worked absolutely perfectly and covered every possible scenario, there are some limitations to it as well, a part of which are due to the way um, that data is um, uh, collected and submitted, say, by preprint servers um, to other services that we use to actually pull this information. And so I'd like to just briefly go over each specific update example um, so that um, it is clear what this tool can and cannot do. So looking first at preprint versions. <clears throat> when a preprint has a more recent version, you will see all of the different versions linked on the preprint record under the preprint version history. So you can see we're now on the version three of this particular preprint and there's version one and two available in your PMC. Um, now, uh, the way in which version information, but also all other metadata uh, about the preprint is um, uh, available in your PMC is because we retrieve it daily um, via the preprint DOI, which is the typical preprint identifier, um, via Crossref metadata service. Now, Crossref is a DOI registration agency, means that um, when preprint servers want to get a DOI for a preprint that's been posted to them, um, they will um, get this DOI from Crossref in exchange for some uh, metadata information that they submit back to Crossref, things like type, preprint title, preprint authors, abstract, um, they may be more or less comprehensive in what it is exactly that they share with Crossref, but Crossref has a free and open API and then a service like your PMC can pull um, information um, from them. For each preprint, including versions with a different DOI, so whenever there is a different DOI, your PMC assigns a PPR ID, which is an internal uh, ID for uh, preprints in your PMC. You can think about it as an accession number for a data record. So data might have a data DOI, uh, but then we also issue an accession ID, so to say the PPR ID um, to handle this in your PMC database. As I mentioned, all preprint versions are linked and we also make them searchable. Um, so um, I will talk about this um, in a bit uh, more detail later, um, but 
basically if say between preprint versions there's been a change in authors or in titles um, you will even if your search for example uh, for the for the latest version wouldn't bring it up because an author has been removed and you're searching by author um, you would still find the previous version but we only display the latest in search results so european c will also will always give the most recent version in search results but all of the versions are made searchable and um, can be retrieved from the version history now there are some limitations to um, using the article status update monitor with uh, when retrieving new preprint versions. And this is to do with the way that some preprint servers handle versioning on their site. Um, for instance, um, servers like BioArchive and MetArchive use the same DOI for the newest version. So um, whenever a new version comes out, um, the DOI is basically registered with that version and older versions um, are no longer um, available if you search by that master DOI. So for European C, this means that we only have the latest version of the preprint, um, even when earlier versions are available from the server. So we are only able to get the latest version. And that basically means that you cannot return version status updates via article status monitor for any of the preprints from the servers that use this. So for servers like Research Square, Chem Archive, um, um, preprints.org, um, this is possible, but for servers like BioArchive and MetArchive, this is not. Moving on to a, a different type of update, namely preprint becoming published in a journal. Um, so here's an example of two records. The first one is a preprint, and you can see in this yellow notification, it will tell you that this article is a preprint and the journal published article is available. And I've shown you this in the demo part, they are interlinked. So you can go to the journal published article. Here is the record in your PMC, and you will see the information notice that the article is linked to a previously available preprint. As I mentioned before, I put links to all of the examples I show here. So here is the um, link for these for this particular preprint. If you ever want to have a more detailed look at um, uh, at examples and try it out yourself. So um, as I mentioned, in European C, we link preprints to corresponding published versions, and um, we get those links from Crossref where available. So sometimes preprint servers know that their preprint has been published. Perhaps um, their authors told them or they have their own mechanism to retrieve those links. Um, places like Research Square collaborate with some journals where a preprint is posted as the article is submitted. And so they know that the journal article preprint link will exist later in the future. Um, but in any case, that isn't necessarily a complete set. So in order to find more links, uh, Europe PMC uses an algorithm to match preprints and journal articles based on titles and authors. So as long as titles and authors are the same between the preprint and the journal article, we establish um, a link between them. Now, obvious limitations to this approach is uh, first, um, the journal article that is linked to preprint has to be available in Europe PMC. Otherwise, we're just not able to link the preprint to anything. Um, and so um, this limits um, it to preprints that are linked to journal articles that come to us via PubMed, PubMed Central or Agricola. Um, I've put a link to the full list of content sources that Europe PMC has. Um, and then also, if preprint authors and the title change between posting and journal publication, which happens, um, it will not be possible to match. So we will miss out some of the connections because of the changes that happened in between. So the other type of update, uh, and perhaps the, the wild west of the preprint updates is preprint withdrawals and removals. And I say wild west because there is a variety of different policies among servers on how they handle withdrawal and removal requests from authors. Um, and therefore there is a variety of ways in which your DMC has to um, deal with those um, when it comes to archiving um, 
preprint records. So here is an example of a preprint withdrawal. Um, you can see that the yellow preprint notification has changed to a red notice. Um, that will tell you that this preprint has been withdrawn by the authors. And you can view this record on the preprint server for more information. Um, this particular preprint is also linked to a journal published article. So if you then view this record on the server, which in this case happens to be BioArchive, you will see that it leads to a disclaimer. Um, so this is what we would call a withdrawal notice. And that will explain um, perhaps the reasons for withdrawal. So in this case, um, the authors have withdrawn the manuscript because it will need to be fully actualized to properly acknowledge some contributions. So um, there's some information about the withdrawal and why it's happening. But if you then go into info or history for this particular preprint, you can see that you're viewing version two, the withdrawal notice, but the version one of the preprint is still available. So if you wanted to, you could go and read the full text of the preprint um, as it was before the authors withdrew it. Um, here is an example of a preprint that has been removed and there is currently, I think, only one um, removed preprint in Europe PMC. Um, so uh, in this case, it will just say that the preprint has been removed by the authors and it will not link to anything because this is essentially the only record that is left. So there will be the DOI if you go to the to this record on the um, preprints or website, which in this case happens to be Research Square, you will see that um, the only piece of information left um, is the title, um, the list of authors, um, the DOI, and the abstract will tell us that the, the authors have removed this preprint. So in this case, they don't specify the reasons, but there is no more text to, to check. Whatever was there has been removed and therefore is no longer accessible, neither through the preprint server nor through Europe PMC. Now, currently, there is no way for preprint servers to automatically tell us and other infrastructure providers um, that a preprint has been withdrawn or removed because there is no field in, for example, Crossref to, to add that piece of information. So, um, Europe PMC had to come up with a semi-automated approach, which involves a manual check to identify these withdrawn and removed preprints. So how does it work? Essentially, we can only do this where um, Europe PMC has the full text of preprints. Um, and I'll talk about which preprints this applies to and, and why. But essentially, we look at the length of the full text and since withdrawal and removal notices generally are much shorter than a complete scientific manuscript, we basically flag them based on the length. So any short uh, documents, any short full text preprints are flagged and then manually checked to make sure that they are indeed a withdrawal or removal notice. And then those get um, tagged with appropriate uh, article or in this case preprint type. So it will be a preprint withdrawal or a preprint removal uh, and they'll be then um, indexed uh, and displayed accordingly on the website. Um, and those, I mean, in the case of a withdrawal, obviously not removal, but withdrawal will be then linked to previous preprint versions that it withdraws. So I mentioned um, the importance of full text. So um, I have said this before, and just to reiterate, Europe PMC is um, different from some other search engines um, in that we um, make both abstract and full text searchable at the same time. So any keyword search you do in Europe PMC will search through both abstracts as well as full text wherever available. And so in terms of preprint uh, preprints I know that uh, uh, preprints generally um, are open access and so you can um, view them freely on the preprint server um, there are no say subscription fees to pay to to read a preprint however um, often they are available from the servers in a non um, structured machine readable format. Um, so usually this might be a PDF, for example, um, that you can view on the preprint server site. So what Europe PMC has done is um, 
converted a subset of preprints to a standard machine readable format, namely JATS XML. And this allows us to make the full text of those preprints searchable alongside abstracts. And for users, this means a greater number of search results can be returned because obviously some of the things will only be mentioned in the full text. Um, things like accession numbers are often hidden somewhere in the um, maybe data availability section and, and don't make their way into the abstract and so on and so forth. And also, if a preprint has an open access license, we can make this um, structured um, uh, full text of a preprint available as part of the bulk download for programmatic um, analysis and text mining um, to do further studies on this preprint subset. So um, I mentioned that we've done this for a subset of preprints, namely in July 2020, we've launched the, the COVID-19 full text preprint project where we index the full text of preprints on COVID-19. And then recently, um, since April this year, we added another stream of full text preprints, um, those that are supported by your PMC funders. Um, and as a pilot, we're now uh, uh, doing preprints um, that come to us through BioArchive, MedArchive, or Research Square as the first batch of servers. And we only look at those that have Creative Commons licenses attached to get the most reduce um, as possible. So currently, um, about 7%, 31,000 of 450,000 preprints in the European Sea have full text available and can be download, uh, downloaded as part of the preprint subset. Um, so what are the limitations to identifying withdrawn preprints? The obvious limitation is that if a preprint only has an abstract in your PMC, and that is all preprints that are not COVID-19 related or are not supported by your PMC funder, we cannot identify if it has been withdrawn or removed. Because as I mentioned, that information isn't easily available through a centralized service like Crossref. The other issue is that sometimes um, it, Preprint servers might not have a clear withdrawal uh, or removal policy, and um, even if they do, in some cases, authors require that a preprint is completely scrubbed from existence, so not, not even a removal notice remains, um, and so Europe PMC, to reflect those instances, um, if a preprint URL leads to a 404 page, um, we will also remove that record from Europe PMC because essentially um, there, there is nowhere um, we can point the users to if they wanted to see the original record. And so um, there are, there are um, some cases in, in which this happens and there is no way to retrieve that as an update through the article status update monitor because obviously no more record exists. And then finally, um, the perhaps easiest one of them all, um, journal article retractions. Um, you can see here an example of a retracted article. So this um, um, red notice will tell us that the article has been retracted and then it's gonna link to the retraction notice, which will uh, explain the reasons for retraction perhaps. So in this case, the article is also based on a preprint. And so we receive publisher retraction notices from PubMed um, and these are linked to the retracted article. So the only stream for retractions is via uh, PubMed information. Um, <clears throat> this concludes uh, the, the explaining part of the webinar. Um, I did add a few more um, search um, options. So you will see here some search syntax and the full syntax is available under this link. Um, so if you uh, wanted to identify a few more records to try out yourself, you can um, do that using um, the following queries. Um, so you can find all published preprints in your PMC, all of the journal articles that are based on a preprint, all withdrawn preprints, all of one removed preprint, although we are um, uh, we are expecting that more and more preprints will pop up in either of those categories as we go forward and more and more preprints are added um, to preprint servers and then journal article retractions can be found using this search. Um, now, hopefully everything works just as expected, but if you ever have any questions, um, here's how to get some help. Um, we have a very responsive help desk um, and you can email us at helpdesk at europeanc.org um, for any help with your queries, 
Um, we also have an active developer forum for those of you who want to try this out programmatically. Um, you can uh, join the Google group itself to get notified about any um, new releases, um, but also you can ask questions there and they will be directly picked up by um, our developers. If um, you have tried out the tool and found that um, it can be improved in any way, uh, please leave us a piece of feedback. Um, I will also use this opportunity um, to ask Summer to share the feedback link for this webinar once again. Um, we ask you to please complete it. And at the end of the feedback form, there is an option to sign up for user research. So if you have um, a particular use case that you'd like to share with us and uh, see how this can be further improved to, to address that use case, um, you can leave your contact details and our user research um, architect will get in touch with you. And finally, um, if you want to get in touch with us via social media or follow any of our updates, here's our Twitter handle, your PMC underscore news. Um, and so please don't hesitate to, um, to ping us with any questions you might have, um, which is a good opportunity to ask actually get to questions. Um, so I'm going to hand back over to Summer uh, and we can have a look at the Q&A. Wonderful. Thank you for that presentation, Maria. It's really interesting. Um, do you remember if you've got any questions to type them into the Q&A and not the chat box, please? So the first question we've got is from Byrony. Can you set up an alert to email you when a preprint has been published or if there's a new preprint version rather than having to um, paste the IDs manually or input them programmatically to check the statuses of the manuscripts you're interested in? Um, that's a, a great question. So your PMC does have um, an alert functionality um, and um, I can perhaps um, jump out of um, the presentation and just show you what it looks like on the website. Um, let's hope this loads quickly enough. Um, so um, for any search that you do, you can create an alert. So in this case, this was just a search for a particular ID. So you can um, save and create. It will ask you to sign in. So you need to create an account in your PMC. Um, but basically there is a, a straightforward way to do this. Now, the only issue is this is currently set up for um, keyword searches. So anything to do with a search like this or with say, you know, preprint has published version um, is not um, going um, to retrieve any updates um, due to the, to the nature of the alert tool. So um, unfortunately, the only way to get these updates at the moment is through the monitor. Um, I imagine it might be possible to automate it in some way, um, but I'm not the best um, person to ask about that. So. You, to reiterate, you can set up email alerts for searches in your PMC, but not for um, updates uh, on, say, preprints. So you could have a search which tells you when an accession number is cited, but not when a preprint becomes published. Thank you, Maria. Does anyone else have any more questions they would like to submit? Uh, while we oh. I've got one typing at the moment. I'm gonna. Uh, yes, there is a recording of this presentation. Uh, you'll all be sent the link after uh, the presentation is finished, uh, and it will also be available on the European C YouTube, which I will put that link in the chat again. Thanks, Summer. Um, and also, I know that you've probably shared slides um, in the chat at some point, uh, but might be worthwhile putting the link there once again, um, simply because, um, as I said, I've tried to uh, link to all of the different examples and it is just easier to um, try the tool out when you have some ideas in mind um, so you can play around with certain things. But again, as I mentioned, um, if at any point you um, sort of uh, get stuck or you'd like some more help and input, um, please do get in touch and we'll be more than happy to, um, to walk you through it.
Right, we've got uh, another question come through from Mark. Is there a URL uh, API that can be used to embed a lookup for a specific ID, imagining placing a user trigger lookup when we cite a preprint? Um, so I think this is a question possibly uh, answerable by lesion. I'm gonna see if you can take that one. <coughs> hi, Maria. Um, hi, Samar, could you repeat the question for Lesion? Lesion, is there a URL API that can be used to embed a lookup for a specific ID, imagining placing a user trigger lookup when we cite a preprint? Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, do, do you mean uh, uh, a URL for uh, triggering a specific ID for, 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 for what, for update? Uh, it says URL, uh, open bracket, API, close bracket, if that helps you more. To embed a lookup for a specific ID. It's in the Q&A box if you want to have a quick. Oh, uh, yes, I, 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 I see it. Um, perhaps if the person has put their name, we can unmute them and uh, see if they can. Oh, OK. You mean the new URL that could be embedded in, for example, embedded in, in a web page. That, that can trigger uh, a lookup of, uh, for uh, for uh, uh, for for a status update for a specific ID. Uh, no, uh, uh, I think you need to implement this kind of URL by yourself because uh, uh, the API is a post request, uh, so uh, I don't think it could be triggered by a, a web link in the web page. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, Mark, please follow up if uh, you want anything else, but uh, they have said yes, exactly. So thank you, Asian. Okay. Uh, we've got another question that's come in from Tung. Uh, Biomodels had linked with EuroPMC PubMed. Do you provide any way to link back? Um, so if Biomodels wants to update or check publications linked to the data set. Patients linked to the data sets. So uh, as long as you have a list of IDs in mind, um, so if you know which, well, if you have a list of IDs that are linked to the data set, um, you could uh, do this um, programmatically or, or manually, whichever way with the status update. So you, you could always get those status updates through, but I'm not sure that I've actually answered the question that was asked. So please, uh, Tung, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, should we uh, maybe, is it possible to unmute them? Let me see. Yes. So, um, did, did uh, really uh, yes, thank you very much for your presentation. Very useful for us. And I think, yeah, uh, the other participant can find yeah very good for, for your work. Um, but um, what I mean is, uh, you know, at the moment we generated uh, the link. I mean, um, rely on the specification provided from from your side. And we have, um, you know, the, uh, yeah, uh, biomodel uh, identifiers and uh, PubMed identifiers. We we have links, uh, but th the problem I found recently is when I try to refetch the data set from PubMed. Yeah, the data set always say new. I yeah, of course. Well, yeah, from PubMed, we all we often modify and update something, but the thing is, when I fetch it again, and it always say uh, that publication has been updated. So um, even just a very minor, you you know, so minor changes. So um, that's why I'm thinking is how we can quickly uh check yeah whether uh. A publication should be replaced 
or I think uh, we just focus on the changes from you know re bring to public or or withdraw yeah article something like that I think that's the major change. I see. Thank you for the clarification. Um, I don't necessarily have an answer right now because I think that the, the changes uh, you were bringing up are not the same ones as we picked through the article monitor. Um, so if that's okay, uh, we'll make sure to follow up um, off call, uh, but it's definitely something that we'd be um, keen to discuss because it is part of the yeah. uh, literature and data linking work that we, um, that we found. Yeah. Yeah. So one more thing is the thing is in in biomodel submission uh, pipeline, um, there one step we provide we ask submitter to provide publication identifiers where the uh, DOI or PubMed if they have. So the system biomodel I mean biomodel allowed to fetch yeah to fetch data from PubMed, uh, European PubMed automatically. So in that situation is we get the latest data from PubMed. But what we want to do is I want to rise, a, you know, a piece of support to, to check uh, regularly, I don't know, just weekly or monthly, the publications in PubMed, whether some, you know, some preprint can change into publicly available yeah that's what we we want to do yeah so, so that should be possible to do with the status update uh module of the api because you can um, do regular post requests and basically at the frequency that is convenient for you and and check whether those are available programmatically but again probably a a, a good point to discuss with our developers and i'll yeah. make sure to put okay. that later yeah, great. Thank you, John. Yeah. Um, do we have any other questions in the Q&A summer? Yes, we do. We've got one from Jennifer. So what are the key differences between the article status monitor and applying the Crossmark logo? Um, that is a very good question. Unfortunately, I'm not very familiar with Crossmark. Um, I mean, I know that Crossref obviously have, um, as far as I, no, and please stop me if I <laughs> um, do not answer this correctly. But as far as I understand, Crossmark is uh, part of uh, art of service Crossref offers. Um, I'm not very familiar with it, but um, if if there are any particular um, differences that you would want to highlight or check, uh, I'm happy to discuss them um, in more detail. The, the data that your PMC and Crossref will have about certain records will definitely differ. Withdrawals and removals was a, was a great example of that because obviously, um, as I mentioned, that is not something that's available through um, Crossref at the moment. Um, but uh, again, I, I'd need to check what Crossmark actually does to be able to answer that. So I'm sorry. Uh, Michelle's uh, followed up uh, with Crossmark is a feature that allows users to find out about article corrections and updates as well as retractions, if that helps. I see. Um, so um, there, 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 is a, there is a way to check for uh, article corrections, um, editorial comments and, and so on and so forth in your PMC, but it is not part of the update module. So um, I think if there is um, a sort of a, a, a use, the, the the module was create the 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 monitor tool was created based on user research we've done, and retractions was um, something that um, definitely came up, um, whereas say comments and corrections wasn't. Um, but if we know that there is a particular um, need for monitoring these, then it. it might be possible to do something similar and add it to the functionality. So uh, if you have a particular example, it would be great if you could fill out the feedback form and leave your contact details so we can get back to you and discuss it in more detail. Wonderful, thank you, Maria. Uh, we also have a question from Carlos. What kind of information the monitor shows for articles? Can there be changes to articles or does it just tell you if, there's, if it's been withdrawn? Um, so, um, as, um, as I mentioned, 
for articles currently, the only update that you can retrieve through the monitor or programmatically is that an article has been retracted. Um, if there are other types of updates that um, users are interested in, again, this is something that we're very interested to hear ourselves and um, would definitely want to know about. Um, so yeah, please, please do, any of your use cases, um, please do send us through because they help us um, improve the tools that we've built. Wonderful, thank you very much. Uh, do we have any last questions as we've got about five minutes till the end? So we do have time to answer one or two more if there are any. If there's not any more questions, I'd like to thank Maria for speaking. I'd like to thank Vision for helping out with questions and also everyone here for attending. And I hope you found this webinar really helpful. If you do have any more questions, please do email us um, or uh, message us on Twitter. And I've also posted the feedback link again for you. It'd be really fabulous if you could fill that out for us. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Yeah, speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you.